Hi, I'm Rachel. There's Missy. <laughs> and uh, I'm here to do my November 2019 book haul because better late than never, right? Hopefully I can do this before uh, my cat starts uh, scratching everything in sight for attention. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, anyway, uh, the major reason why I was late with this video is because of this book which I ordered in November, but it didn't get here till December, so that's my excuse. This is Beyond Chrismica, The Christian Jewish Interfaith Family in the United States by Samira K. Mehta, which I held up as one of the uh, Jewish nonfiction books I wanted to read in 2019 that was published last year. Uh, I talked about it way back in uh, January, and uh, it particularly appealed to me because I myself am from an interfaith family. Uh, and so I do intend to read it this month, and this is what it says on the back. The rate of interfaith marriage in the United States has risen so radically since the 60s that it is difficult to recall how taboo the practice once was. How is this development understood and regarded by Americans generally, and what does it tell us about our nation's <laughs> religious life? Drawing on ethnographic and historical sources, Samira K. Mehta provides a fascinating analysis of wives, husbands, children, and their extended families in interfaith homes, religious leaders, and the social and cultural milieu surrounding mixed marriages among Jews, Catholics, and Protestants. Meta's eye-opening look at the portrayal of interfaith families across American culture since the mid-20th century ranges from popular TV shows, holiday cards, and humorous guides to Crispica, to children's books, young adult fiction, and religious and secular advice manuals. Meta argues that the emergence of multiculturalism helped generate new terms by which interfaith families felt empowered to shape their religious practices in ways and degrees previously unknown. They began to intertwine their religious identities without compromising their social standing. This rich portrait of families living diverse religions together at home advances the understanding of how religion functions in American society today. So yeah, this is uh, my book. <laughs> this is me in uh, literature, so I'm down. <laughs> I wish this cat would get down, but anyway, the second book I want to show you is a library book, but it's on the same uh, theme of Jewish uh, nonfiction published in 2018 I wanted to read this year, and I've read the intro so far. This is On Middle Ground, A History of the Jews of Baltimore by Eric L. Goldstein and Deborah R. Wiener. I held it up in my last Friday Reads video. It's about the history of Jews and the city I was born in, and it's next on my docket. Returning to books I acquired to keep, uh, this is one I got out of uh, a free little library in one of my NaNoWriMo videos uh, from a few weeks ago. This is Strangers and Cousins by Leah Hager Cohen. Uh, it's something that just came up on the Jewish Book Council, I'm sure, uh, that interested me that was published this year. I will read from the flap. In this seemingly idyllic town of Rundle Junction, Benita and Walter are preparing to host the wedding of their elder daughter, Clem. A marriage ceremony at their beloved rambling home should be the happiest of occasions, but Walter and Benny have a secret. A new community is moving into Rundle Junction, threatening the social order and forcing Benny and Walter to confront uncomfortable truths about their small town. Meanwhile, Aunt Glad, the oldest member of the family, arrives for the wedding, troubled by long-buried memories of a scarring event that occurred when she was a little girl in Rundle Junction. As she pieces together details about this event, the family begins to realize that Clem's wedding may not be exactly what they imagined. Clever, passionate, artistic Clem has her own agenda. What she doesn't know is that by the end, everyone will have roles to play in this richly imagined ceremony of familial connection, a brood of quirky relatives, effervescent college friends, ghosts emerging from the past, a determined little mouse, and even a very new group of religious neighbors whose arrivals have shaken Rundle Junction. With Strangers and Cousins, Leah Hager Cohen delivers a story of pageantry and performance, difference in connectedness, hopefulness, and growth. So yeah, you know, my usual blend of family drama, nothing like a wedding to bring that out. Uh, I know that the religious, uh, new religious community is a Hasidic community. Uh, I think this family might be a secular Jewish family too, so it's always interesting to see how uh, those two groups collide. And finally, I'll close out with two more library books. This is Oedipus in Brooklyn and Other Stories by Loom Lempo. Uh, and it's translated from the Yiddish by Ellen Cassidy and, forgive my Hebrew, Yirmiyahu Ahron Taub. 
Uh, so yeah, this was something else I heard about through the Jewish Book Council, a uh, author of yesteryear who has been rediscovered and in this case translated. She was a Yiddish American author, so I'm really excited to give her a try. Also, every Hanukkah, I do a Jewish short story reading project to coincide with the Eight Nights. So this is my collection for this year, so you will see it in its own special little video coming up soon. And finally, rounding out with Israeli literature, I have The Liar by Ayelet Gunder Goshen, translated uh, from the Hebrew by Sandra Silverstein. I believe Sandra Silverstein translated uh, Waking Lions, her last translated novel, which I read and reviewed uh, for a Women in Translation video a couple years ago, which I really loved. It was a very uh, probing um, novel, confrontational, makes you think about uh, a doctor who accidentally runs over an Eritrean uh, immigrant and tries to you know, leave the scene of the crime and is blackmailed by his widow. Uh, the, the, the man who died his widow, uh, and uh, it just was a deep uh, sucker punch into human psychology, and I believe that this book uh, will be the same. I'll read from the flap. Nofar is an average teenage girl, so average in fact that she's almost invisible. Serving customers ice cream all summer long, she is desperate for some kind of escape. One afternoon, a terrible lie slips from her tongue. And suddenly, everyone wants to talk to her, the press, her schoolmates, and even the boy upstairs. He is the only one who knows the truth, and he is demanding a price for his silence. Then Nofar meets Raymond, an elderly woman whose best friend just died. Raymond keeps her friend alive the only way she knows how, by inhabiting her stories. But soon Raymond's lies take on a life of their own. Written with the propulsive energy, dark humor, and deep insight, the Liar reveals the far-reaching consequences of even our smallest choices and explores the hidden corners of human nature to reveal the liar and the truth-teller in all of us. I uh, admit that I think uh, a more detailed analysis talks about one of the lies being told is about uh, a sexual assault that didn't happen, which always makes me pause because, you know, more assaults uh, are not reported that should be versus, you know, the opposite. But uh, Gunder Goshen is so good at uh, deeply probing uh, human uh, behaviors that I feel like I should give her a chance uh, and hopefully once again she will uh, impress me. And it seems like it's much bigger than that one issue as well. Also, I should point out that this author was once a psychologist, and obviously her take on human behaviors has been fascinating me, and she recently was interviewed by the Jewish Book Council, so I will link that interview down below. So that about covers it for me now. I will link to all of the Goodreads pages for these books down below. And speaking of Goodreads, um, I've heard through the booktubes about um, a new tag by a new booktuber, Game of Authors where he um, asks people to talk about uh, the longest books they've read in uh, this past decade. And uh, I'm curious to do it myself, and like most people, I believe, I will be consulting my Goodreads stats to do it. And But that started to make me think bigger. Uh, so I was thinking of uh, looking at all of my end-of-year stats and making a handful of videos about uh, the books that I read basically in uh, this past decade, the tens or the teens, I guess it's called. Uh, so I will be back here hopefully uh, before Friday Reads. And thank you to Game of Authors and all the people who did his tag for the inspiration. In the meantime, I just returned for a brief stint to Baltimore where my parents live, where I went to see the Nutcracker with my parents and my six-year-old niece. Uh, she had, I think, up and down experiences with it. You know, there's uh, the magical storyline. It's a little nonsensical. <laughs> Doesn't have as, uh, not as easy to follow, I think. But then I think uh, she started to really like the dancing, so that's, uh, so that's good. I thought it was pretty good, you know, in its amateur performance, but uh, I always enjoy seeing the Nutcracker. Uh, from here, I'm going on to my mundane existence, back to work for the week, but uh, thank goodness for booktube and other things uh, to keep life exciting. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.